So we'll get it a little bit closer so you can say hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you can say hi a little bit more. <laughs> you know we're on on. We are on on. We don't have a camera person, so we're doing this uh, the best that we can. Uh, but it's good to see you. We're back with our Facebook Live. Uh, if you're new to this, this is something we try to do every three to two to three weeks, maybe once a month. We do these on specific topics. The topic today is on fertility. You obviously know this if you're watching here, if you're live. We do these lives so we can interact with you. You can write comments and ask questions throughout and we'll do our best to try to answer some of your questions. Um, and it's meant to, uh, to really provide some good information about a topic. Uh, we are both acupuncturists, so we will talk more specifically about how acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, can help with infertility. If I say fertility, or if I mix with fertility and infertility, we're talking about the same thing. Having tr problems with con conceiving. Um, so I can see that we are there and we are on and live. And um, so I want to start off by talking a little bit about the idea of, uh, all right, so um, I have a family, but you don't, right? And maybe at one point uh, you might find Mr. Wright and you might decide, all right, we're going to start a family. It's time. And um, it uh, should be a very magical, beautiful, very like a, um, you know, like a fairy tale, like, you, like a, I remember like when I was like, my parents were like introducing some of these ideas as a kid and like, oh yeah, it's weird. And as I got older, like, you know, can you remember like as a teenager, like the thoughts of, or. Well, yeah, I think as a teenager, even you think it's going to happen instantly. Yeah. Like, be careful. Like, be very, very careful. Instantly. Like, and it. Got triplets. I, yeah, for us, like, and it, it uh, so, anyways, but um, we're seeing definitely an increase uh, in troubles and issues with fertility here in Ontario now. You can have an IVF treatment uh, that will be covered by the government. So, obviously, there is a problem that's being recognized, and we're going to talk about it. Um, but, you know, imagine that you're, you know, you're deciding, okay, I got my, uh, I want to do this, and um, maybe you were on birth control because that's a bit of a story that a lot, um, you know, uh, young teenagers will go on birth control, some type, and then uh, over time, um, you know, you uh, decide, okay, we're gonna do this, and uh, first month doesn't really work out. Okay, that's all right. Second month, still nothing. Third, oh, what's going on? Fourth, and you start getting worried. Yeah, and then you start like thinking, like, is there something wrong with me? <laughs> Am I not uh, a woman? Am I not like enough of a... And doubt starts to creep in and you start to wonder, um, is this ever going to happen? So then you go online. This is what we do. <laughs> we go and we research and we research the heck out of it. <laughs> and we find out coffee's bad. Don't drink coffee. And alcohol is bad. So don't have, some, don't have any alcohol. You know, don't even think about it. And maybe you should think about working out a little bit. Maybe you've been, uh, maybe you need to lose a few pounds, you know? Uh, so you start like, okay, I'm gonna join the gym. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up really early. I'm not gonna have my coffee anymore. I'm gonna go to the gym, work out, I'm gonna lose some of the weight. And, uh, and then you hear other things like, uh, Special diets. Yeah, special diets. This is what you, you know, have you tried this, uh, these, these herbs? Have you tried these vitamins, these supplements? He's like, okay, I got all, I got to get all these supplements now. I got to get like my B and my whatever, my folic, and and then you're like, all right, you got all that, and um, and then it's like, okay, and you find out, hey, there's a window, there's a time that we're supposed to have sex, and we're supposed to then that, and the window is actually very small. You, you do a bit of research, you find out, oh no, it's a very short window, and and so you say to your your husband or maybe your partner, say, okay, we're not having sex. <laughs> until, until, the window. until the window and it's just like all of that creates such a stressful environment like the couple that was so in love and so ready to start this beautiful journey and this creation of family and all that all of a sudden now is like a big eh. ball of anxiety <laughs> and stress and... yeah so if you're here we'd love to see um, if some of you resonate with that, where you're from. Um, and if some of you are watching this 
And I know uh, some of you were liking this. I know some of you decided to come and see me at one point and uh, couldn't conceive or having problems with your cycle. And I know that some of you now have a baby. Uh, just So just to kind of, uh, you know, if that's you and you're watching this or if you know, um, please share this information with others and share um, or just write a comment, tell me, say hi. I'll maybe recognize some of your names. I will definitely recognize your names. <laughs> so, yeah, it's supposed to be magical. It's not always, um, but we're gonna talk about why is it stressful, what can you do, give you some solutions. We're also going to talk about uh, two major conditions that tend to be very common. We're gonna talk about endometriosis and we're going to talk about PCOS. We're also gonna talk about just aging, getting older, the clock. It's ticking. It's ticking. We're going to talk about that. Those are the three things. And we're going to stay really focused on traditional Chinese medicine. Obviously, we're going to bring some Western ideas. Some, uh, uh, we're talking about hormones, obviously, but uh, mainly we are acupuncturists and we're here to talk about Chinese medicine. Um, because, really, if you've been to a fertility clinic, there's a high chance that they might have recommended you to go see an acupuncturist and to try it because it's been shown to be effective. So um, we're gonna start off with some questionnaires so we can make this a little bit more interactive for you and for everybody. Uh, so if you are, and we are trying this also at a different time. Normally we do this in the evenings, um, but we are doing this on a lunchtime. For one, to make our lives a little bit easier, uh, but also to see if that's a better time for you. So if, if, if uh, noon time, lunchtime is a great time for you, please comment, let us know. If you're like, no, I could never watch this on noon, at noontime, uh, go back to evenings, then let us know that too. Uh, so question number one. Um, so one out of 10 will have infertility um, issues, difficulty con with conception. Um, is that correct? Is, it, uh, is that like one out, of 10, one out of 10 seems like a high number, like, but is that 10%. true? 10%, yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think? What do you think, Hannah? Should I tell you the answer next? <laughs> um, yeah, let's actually, tell the answer. It's actually higher than that, so it's one in six. One in six. Yeah. And it's increasing over the years. So um, I know in the 80s it was about 5%, and now we're seeing that about 16% of couples are having issues conceiving. Mm -hmm. And uh, is, it all, is it all female, all male? Um, uh, I'm going to ask you the percent, what do you think is the percentage to be uh, men's fault? Like, uh, um, so do you think it's 15% uh, male fertility issues? You think that's correct? We have a few here, so if you can write, just write your comments and uh, let us know what do you think. What do you think is the percentage of... Uh, uh, having fertility issues, but being on the male side. So it's actually about fifth, or sorry, forty percent. Thirty percent. It's thirty percent. Thirty percent, and yeah. then I think for females it's forty. Yeah. But I think there's so much pressure for females that everyone always thinks, oh, it's something going on with the female in the couple. Um, that one of her issues, but it's actually it takes two, obviously. Yes. So there is actually a large percentage that it actually. Thirty percent. That's female. that's like one in three almost. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. So. Yeah. Um, I think that just goes back to just say too that you know if you are looking at acupuncture, different treatments, it shouldn't just be the female coming to see us. Maybe. Yes. Kind of and, a partnership. and I would say like probably ninety percent. I only see the woman. Yeah. I don't see the man. Um, and y yes, the percentage is a little bit higher on the female side, but still, I think uh, I have had probably the best success when I was seeing the couple together. Um, so, okay, uh, let's talk about uh, being on the pill, quitting some type of contraceptive method, and uh, how long does it take to regulate your cycle to get back and having a regular period? Do you think it takes two to four months, maybe three to six months? Can you take a year? What do you think? And there's different types of birth control too, I think it's important to note. Yep. So it's going to depend on what type you're taking, if it was related to hormones, whether it was more of a structural barrier. So, so what's the answer? 
So it can take up to a year and even longer. Um, so if someone's been on the pill for several years, and that's the case for a lot of, you mentioned young um, women, they go on the pill to regulate their cycle as teenagers. They've got heavy bleeding or cramping. So mm -hmm. the number one thing that your doctor will tell you, go on the pill. It'll help re regulate things. So some people have been on the pill now for 10, 15, 20 years, and now all of a sudden they're trying to conceive and they maybe just stopped their pill a couple months ago. It takes months to be able to you know, regulate those hormones again. Because the reality is your body hasn't been producing those hormones for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you stop birth control and then you're like, oh, how long it's like taking a long time, just expect that. Uh, it can take six months, easy. Uh, in general, maybe it's a three to six months, but I've seen pe I've seen cases where it, uh, it has really had had a, a bit of a negative effect. It has made things much harder. Um, and I want to talk a bit about that uh, just in this point right now because I'm not a woman, <laughs> so maybe, I but um, I think we see maybe too many young teenagers going on birth control to regulate the cycle. Uh, because it's a quick, easy fix. It's a very simple, like, you just take these pills and all of a sudden, know. and at the same time, it'll protect you from getting pregnant, so it's good. Uh, but um, a lot of people do go on it to help with, you know, heavy bleeding or... But if that's the case, then there should be maybe a, a better look at it. Because if you're not dealing it with, with it now, you're just going to have to deal with it later. When And it's always better to deal with something sooner at than the at the time than... Uh, so if you're having, you know, you know, a lot of cramping, a lot of, consider something like acupuncture, consider maybe reviewing your diet, consider just uh, going to see someone that uh, will do more testing, will try to really get to the root cause of the problem besides just saying, okay, we're going to suppress your hormones uh, for 10, 15 years, go ahead. That will solve it. That will solve it. No, like it's so, it's, it's, I don't know how many times I've heard like, um, you know, People coming to see me now, they're in their 30s, and they're like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have gone on the pills for so long. I wish I would have done something earlier. So, yeah. Oh, we're getting more people. All right. Now, um, let's talk about the window. Not the window on your computer. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. Okay, the window about the time, the... Your window about um window of opportunity yes so what do you think it is like do you think it's uh, before ovulation do you think you have a week do you think it has like two three days is it um a couple minutes <laughs> um, yeah a couple minutes you think it's after you're you've ovulated so if you're taking your temperature you're measuring um you uh and you see the spike all of a sudden that's go time uh, when do you think it is Hello, Katrina. <laughs> so, do you want to answer? Or want... Yeah. Uh, so, the window of opportunity, if you look at ovulation, it's actually 12 to 24 hours that the egg is viable. Mm -hmm. um, but the yeah. reality is. So, you got the egg, got the egg. and it's matured, it's ready, mm -hmm. but if there's no sperm entering uh, into the egg, the egg will die. Yeah. And um, that's. Um, 12, 12 to 24 hours. hours. Yeah, so that's a small window. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the sperm. Because mm -hmm. it takes two. Because it takes two. So the sperm, yep. how long does that live? Four to five days. Yes. So maybe the window of opportunity is a little bit wider if you think of it that way. Yeah. So um, probably the best time of conceiving would be a few days before ovulation. Uh, and you have a window maybe of like you know, five days. Uh, so, um, I think being so strict also on the window is not a good idea, uh, because you might ovulate a little bit later and not be very clear. Ovulation tests are not always so accurate. You might have, so I think it's just having, um, good overall, um, maybe not every day, but maybe every second day or every two to three days. Um, I, I think I hear it way too many times, uh, couples telling me, we only have sex that one week, that week of ovulation. And that's, uh, I think that will affect hormones. I think that will affect your, the rest of your cycle too. So, um, 
Not just the, it shouldn't just happen that one week. Okay. Um, now let's talk about age. Is it possible to get pregnant when you're 40? Or in your 40s? Because... And now I find... 40 is old. <laughs> no, women, there's old. studies that show that women are getting pregnant later and later. People are now more career oriented towards the beginning, so they're putting off having a family until things are more. So, what do you think is the percentage, your chances of getting pregnant in your 40s? And when I say 40s, let's say 40 to 45. I don't know, but what do you yeah, think is the percentage? Go ahead. 53. <laughs> 53. 53%. That's huge. Yeah. Like, that surprised me when I read that. Yeah. It's not uh, bad odds. It's not bad odds. Like, that's a, that's good odds mm -hmm. considering, uh, in my mind, like, uh, I do find... Um, People lose hope. Yeah. Things. Yeah. And I think it's important to realize that even at 40 or into your 40s, the possibility is still there. It's and we're going to talk more about aging and how to, uh, how to age uh, maybe we're gonna give you some options and give you some ideas about aging and that um, Because I don't think everybody that is 40 is actually 40 and we'll talk more about that Or if you're 35 um, There's definitely um, It's been shown that after 35 there are more changes and then you can have more complications if you do get pregnant That's true um, But it is possible. I've had uh, definitely people in my clinic come in their 40s get pregnant and have beautiful healthy babies um, so we have seen that pretty much okay so that's for our questions and we are going to get um, we are going to get do you know Vicky? maybe I know Vicky doesn't matter we're gonna get into our topics so we have two uh, conditions that we're gonna treat that we're gonna not treat but we're gonna talk about endometriosis yeah so that's me. So endometriosis is when tissue that's supposed to be in the uterus actually grows outside of the uterus. So this can cause different complications. It's all regulated by hormones. So people will have issues during their cycle. Um, a lot of times it causes pain. So really painful periods, pain during sex. Um, it can also lead to infertility. So a lot of times people come and that's what they've been told is because of the endometriosis that they have that they won't be able to conceive, or it's going to be more challenging to conceive. Mm -hmm. um, so in Chinese medicine, we look at different concepts that could actually cause endometriosis or something along those lines, and we look at something that's growing and is stuck in an area that it shouldn't be. So we talk a lot about stagnation and blood stasis, um, so blood that's coagulating in one spot. Um, so with acupuncture, you can actually help increase circulation. We always are talking about circulation, it seems, but it's just such a key concept. Um, so helping to actually regulate blood flow and circulation, specifically in the uterus um, and reproductive organs, can actually help with the pain in particular. Um, for really severe cases of endometriosis, acupuncture is not going to make it disappear. Um, unfortunately, that's just, it hasn't been shown that that's going to happen, but it can help still treat because it can help with the pain that people experience. Um, it can help still regulate things so that maybe it's not such an issue when it comes to fertility. Um, so there's different things you can still look at. So sometimes we'll talk about Chinese herbs to help with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but regulating hormones and increasing blood flow definitely will help I, deal with that. I had a patient that had very severe, severe endometriosis. And uh, it was like everywhere. And um, you can have it around the anus. You can have it, uh, it's, it can go into like, it can be very uh, abundant. Mm -hmm. And um, she was really finding that acupuncture was the really the only thing that was re really helping with the pain, uh, which was great that it was helping with the pain, but it just wasn't necessarily um, removing the endometriosis. It so, can stop it from growing and getting worse. And there so how do you get it? How do you get it to go away? Um, oftentimes, it's going to be surgery. If it's really bad, that's really the only solution that they have is just to go in and remove it. Yeah. Um, which, you know, there's always risks with surgery, so it's not the ideal case, but sometimes if it's... If there's if it's too much, bad, and yeah. yeah. And there's different severities of it, so some people will have very minor... So when you're saying cases. surgery, are you saying removing, like doing a full hysterectomy, or...? That would be the extreme case, but yeah, sometimes that's the case as well. Sometimes they'll go in and just remove the, the tissue that's the problem. Yeah. Um, but when it's really bad, and especially in cases where it's throughout the body, um, they will just do full hysterectomies to, to solve the problem. Yeah. yeah. 
not ideal. Yeah. So uh, let's say that they didn't do the hysterectomy <laughs> because you want to have a family, you want to one day have kids, so that's not an option for you. Uh, they go do more like removing the, the tissues and the scarring and all that. Um, what would be the next best thing to do? For treating the endometriosis and yeah. the fertility part. Um, okay, what I'm trying to get you to say <laughs> is once you've had like the surgery, consider doing acupuncture okay. very much. It's going to help it from possibly coming back exactly. once the tissue is actually removed. So yeah. the idea is that once it's removed, great, you're kind of starting from scratch. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. So again, increasing blood flow, making yeah. sure the blood isn't getting stuck and starting to fuse in other areas is very important. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions uh, or anything else about endometriosis? It's um, I think, again, just making sure that people realize that it's going to help well, the acupuncture is going to help a lot with the pain. How is it de detected? Did you say how it was de detected? Um, often it's just testing that they'll do. They'll do imaging. Oftentimes people go in with just severe pain. And that's really where it all starts. Yeah. They just have unexplained pain. Um, so if you have pain, waiting, if you have pain and you take just painkillers all the time, but you're not getting to the root of the, of the problem, uh, again, like we have a, like a constant message, yeah. like treat the root of the problem. No, this is... It makes sense, yeah, you're in pain, you can't move, you can't go to work, uh, I'll take maybe a Motrin, I'll take something to help, um, but get to the root of the problem. So much um, when we talk about the birth control, you're just taking a pill to mask the problem. Yeah. That doesn't mean that the problem went away. It doesn't make the, you know, the issue any less of an issue. So I hope that gives you a bit of an insight on um, how we approach endometriosis. We're trying to increase more blood flow to make sure it doesn't stay. St stuck in that area so it doesn't create all this scar tissue or all this uh, inflammation. inflammation. Um, I want to talk about PCOS. Uh, it's something that is uh, quite common. I don't have actually the statistics of it, but I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, basically, it's really a condition where your hormones are out of balance uh, and your hormones are producing uh, and then you start seeing symptoms. The common symptoms that you're going to see is maybe some weight gain in the abdomen area. You're going to see some facial hair. Uh, you will see some, uh, maybe some discoloration in skin. Um, you will see maybe, uh, and really what ends up happening is you, your body produces little cysts on your ovaries. And, um, and it's really because you have maybe an excess of male hormones. Um, so you're becoming too manly and you're producing hair in different areas where you shouldn't. Uh, and that's just affecting um, how you're ovulating. And in some cases, you won't ovulate properly. And because you're not ovulating, uh, you won't be able to conceive. So it's really a hormonal imbalance. Um, and, it's, and it's detected uh, by just if we see the common symptoms. And not all, you won't always see the common symptoms. So you might not be overweight and have PCOS. You might not necessarily have uh, hair growth or uh, hair loss is also another symptom. Um, but basically, um, um, what's, what's happening is that your hormones are getting out of balance. Another major um, problem that we will see is a problem with insulin. So you will, your body will uh, have problem with insulin and uh, especially if you're like, you might be craving more sugar and you might want like energy and you might be tired um, so your body's going to have and the excess sugar and the problem with insulin is going to affect other hormones so it's a very hormonal imbalance um, and in Chinese medicine we see when we see problems like with weight we see problems with uh, cyst creation we see problems with um, uh, di not necessarily diabetes but oftentimes you'll you will maybe be prescribed uh, a diabetic medication um, we have an organ, which is, I said we, uh, we treat what's called, uh, we would say you have a spleen deficiency. Uh, and basically that means your digestive system is really not effective. So your pancreas, uh, your stomach, your intestines are, uh, not transforming and transporting the, your nutrients properly. And that is having an effect on hormones. So a lot of times in a PCOS, our main focus will be on addressing a better digestive system and by addressing a better digestion your insulin becomes more balanced and that starts to have an effect on your on your 
uh, other uh, reproductive hormones like your uh, LH and FSH. Um, you know, I've always kind of, uh, maybe this would be helpful for you. Um, I don't know, I was going to explain hormones a little bit, but maybe not. But uh, at the end of the day, you have, you know, your cycle is supposed to go a certain way. You're supposed to produce, you're supposed to produce like an egg and that happens. Your, your body sends a signal to tell you to produce, uh, start producing the egg and slowly, slowly it starts to grow and mature and get, and when the time is right, um, the other hormones, uh, spikes and then you, it releases the egg and then that's where it should get fertilized. <laughs> And then, but, um, it's a very, it's, there's a lot of hormones that needs to happen. Like it's a very, like in order for this, this will happen and then this will start to regulate it. And then there's progesterone and then there's a lot of variables at play. There's tons and tons of variables. And all it takes is one of them to be off and yeah. then everything else. Yeah. So again, our approach with Chinese medicine and not always, it's not everybody that has been told that has PCOS will get this um like we will address more the digest the digestive system but i would say in most cases that's a big part of what we're trying to uh, achieve um, but we try to vary to to differentiate to figure out oh maybe you don't fit exactly this mold um but if if it is the case in which many times it's more related to di digestion we'll work with nutrition we'll try to review your nutrition and try maybe to reduce carbohydrates a little bit not to the point where you're having no carbs, but definitely maybe not to have an excess. Um, we will look at also Chinese herbs to help you in your in your diet, not in your diet, in your absorption, getting more nutrients properly, um, making sure your bowels are functioning better. And uh, we see a lot of times, I think PCOS and IBS together, um, that is something that is very quite often seen. So, um, We'll try to help and assist that and um yeah so we and like your body's producing these cysts these these cysts formation and uh, in chinese medicine we see that as dampness and this dampness is being created because the spleen is not effective i know dampness and spleen not being effective might sound kind of strange and like oh, how does that work but that's kind of the language we would use in chinese medicine but in general is your digestive system is not great definitely a review on your diet a review, uh, making sure you have good supplementation maybe. Um, we do Chinese herbs that will help with that. And um, and yeah, so that's PCOS in a nutshell. I don't know if there's anything else I can add to it, but... Um, I think that sums it up pretty well. Yeah. So... Age is our next one. Let's talk about age as our final topic for today. So you've been, thir you're 35. I think 35 is one of the numbers that, uh, that like, starts to worry people. Starts to stress people. Because like, then the next one is 40. Yes. You go to 35, 40? Pretty much. Well, okay. yeah, but in terms of like, you know, landmarking age, Yeah. that's like the next one yeah. that you start to worry about. People don't worry about 36, 37, the seeing the 40 approach. So one uh, little concept that I'd like to introduce is whether you are 35 or 40 or 25, it is a number. It is the number that has been, that you have, and it has measured the length of time you've been on this planet. <laughs> now, uh, that is a number, um, and yes, that is the number, but we all age differently. Uh, like, look at Hannah. Can you tell she's 55? <laughs> she's not 55. No, I thought I looked very youthful. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we all age differently. And uh, part of it is a bit genetic. Part of it is also lifestyle very much. Environment. Environment, yeah. So how you live, you could have two people that are 35. And one of them is, you know, working crazy hours, a smoker, drinks too much, um, high, stress. high stress, maybe overweight, uh, really unhealthy, doesn't exercise a lot versus the opposite. Someone that is very, um, you know, Conscious. mindful about their, about their health. They're doing good choices for the nutrition, doing, uh, trying to exercise regularly, getting outside. Who's going to age faster. They might have the, all the same. They might both have the same age, 
they might both be 35, but I, I definitely I can imagine that one's, per, one will have, one's quality of eggs uh, won't necessarily be the same. There are people in their 30s that are being told uh, you're running out of eggs. Um, there's a problem with FSH and um, uh, the quality of your eggs are getting poor and, uh, and there are people that are in their 40s that have great uh, egg quality. So um, even like for sperm, there I meet sometimes men that come to see me, and uh, their problem with problems with sperm count, problems with motility, and uh, the age varies a lot. So the whole point is that um, age is just a number. Age is a number. It's just a number. And I feel like I feel and I can do a lot more right now. I'm in my mid thirties than when I was in my mid 20s. Uh, and it's simply because I've been doing so much more with my health than I was at back then. So, um, so we want to keep, give you some hope, want to give you some, some, you know, some considerations about that. Um, and even just what you mentioned, so you've maybe had an unhealthy lifestyle up until now. That doesn't mean you're stuck with it. Yes. You know what I mean? So you said you didn't feel great when you were 25, let's say, yeah. but now you feel healthier. Yes. So, you can make changes. You can actually change your quality of life and your health, really. So, mm -hmm. so we talked on these three, uh, PCOS, endometriosis, and age. If you have other topics that you'd like to, uh, there's, we could have talked about so many things. There's so many uh, variables. Uh, if you have IVF, should you consider coming getting acupuncture? Absolutely. Uh, you don't have to wait until you go through implement, implantation. You can come a lot earlier, get your body healthier, and then go through um, the procedure. If anything, that's the ideal situation, because then when you go in for the treatment, it's an expensive procedure yeah. and process. So to go into it, more strong, healthier body, your hormones hopefully a little bit more regulated than before. Acupuncture is great for getting that system ready mm -hmm. before the IVF. Mm -hmm. I definitely have had patients that were uh, going through IVF, came for acupuncture, and were successful, and some weren't. Like, and that's the tricky part. And I wish that uh, it's not something that we're saying that we can guarantee that you know anybody that comes get acupuncture, um, but it's just something that I think uh, we've been very. It's been successful. It's been more successful than maybe other options, and. Uh, and this is something that maybe some of your friends aren't aware of. Or um, so, I guess to to summarize to conclude, uh, the Chinese medicine approach is very individualized. Um, we don't like when it comes to like for example PCOS. We don't necessarily have a protocol for PCOS. As I mentioned, uh, we try to get to the root of the problem. A lot of times, the root of problems with PCOS would be a digestive problem. So we would focus maybe on the stomach, or we focus on the intestines get that functioning better, and then the hormones will become more balanced. Instead of saying, well, you have hair on your chin, so we're gonna do acupuncture for hair on the chin, and we're gonna do acupuncture for belt, weight on the belly, and we're gonna do acupuncture, instead of being so focused on the symptoms that you're being like, or oh, you have a cyst, we're going to really get to the root of it. So that's the main message that we often try to communicate with traditional Chinese medicine. And, um, yeah, is there anything else uh, you can think that you would like to add? I think just if you're interested in it, if you have any questions about it, it's worth coming to talk to one of us about it. See, like I said, it is very individual, so there's not necessarily going to be a cookie cutter answer for everybody, and it's worth having. You know, it's a big life decision having yeah. kids. So, If you would come to see us, for example, and give you an idea of what it would look like, I think that's another very valid... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, typically we might get you started on the idea, give you a, an idea to consider doing this maybe for a period of three months, maybe six months, um, to really get your body uh, functioning properly. Because again, like we really, um, you know, we see, we gather a lot of information on how your period, uh, and our goal is to get you to have a regular healthy cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's often presented on how was the period? Was it short was it long is your cycle too long do you have 50 days do you have 20 days i think uh, people are so surprised too how many questions we do ask about that yeah so many times they'll say how's your cycle and they say oh i'm regular 
But then when I ask more specific questions, you know, I find out that it's very scanty or it's lasting four to seven to 10 days, or they have a lot of cramping and back pain. And that's not necessarily a normal cycle. Yeah. That's I had someone recently uh, where uh, I asked her, do you have any clots? And she was like, oh yeah, of course. Like, mm -hmm. who doesn't? I was like, well, clots not necessarily a normal thing. You don't like, uh, it's actually a sign that your blood is stagnating in that area. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's also a, a very, you know, topic that, you know, unless you had a really medical background, you maybe I could see a lot of, it could be very easy to miss things or to think, well, yeah, everybody does have lower back pain when you, and it's normal to cry all the time when you have your, so, um, you know, I, we hope that this was helpful. Uh, so it's a it's a big topic and there's just so much that we can cover we wanted to keep this fairly short so yeah, this is kind of lunch break uh, so you have time to get back to work uh, please you know give us a call if you want to talk more you can come in for an examination we can introduce it to you uh, as always we do, do give out a gift for anybody that shares this video in the next 24 hours we will look at who's sharing this and if you share it you might win uh, a set of Chinese herbs so if uh, you know you're curious about uh, maybe acupuncture or Chinese medicine, we thought this time we would include some Chinese herbs. There would be herbs specifically for you, so you would come in, have an assessment, and we would prepare some herbs. And uh, these herbs can be for many different uh, conditions, but very much uh, can help address the cycle. Now, um, that's our topic for today, um, and we want to talk about infertility. Um, Next time we will be talking, instead of seeing us, you're going to see the chiropractors. Uh, so you're going to see Dr. Emily and Dr. Katrina, and they will be talking about more pediatrics. So we talk about how to make babies. <laughs> They're going to talk about, okay, once you have your baby, what should you do with it? And they both really focus a lot on kids. They see a lot of babies and infants. And... Um, they're going to give you some really good insight on that. So that will be coming up in about three weeks. Uh, we plan on doing it on a lunchtime as well, unless um, you guys, our audience, are telling us, no, don't do it on the lunch. We prefer to do it in the evening times. But um, most likely it will be a lunchtime. And we have a tentative date, but it will be announced on Facebook. If you haven't subscribed, uh, or I'm, I don't know if it's subscribed, if you haven't liked our Facebook page, that's really how you can get notos, notified on when we do these. Um, if you can go ahead and just like the Oak Tree Health page, uh, that's who we are, that's the name of our clinic, uh, Oak Tree, and um, you will get notified when the next one is coming. So, we will see you next time. Bye-bye.